What's going on guys? This is Bunny Muffins. I have a set 6.5 wish list. Please Riot Games, if you guys are listening, I have around like I think 14 suggestions that I want to have in your video game, which is Team Fight Tactics. Some of these are going to be like a big ask from you guys, but I feel like they would have a big impact on the game in a positive way. Some of them are very easy to do, but I also think would be very beneficial to the game. And of course, I have some small minor stuff that I'll complain about as well. Uh, but let's just get right into the list because I don't want to waste anyone's time. So first things first, I feel like in the past set, they did not do a good job of having a diversity of carries at different cost levels. For example, there was never a patch where there was a one cost, two cost, three cost, four cost, and five cost carry that were playable at like a pretty viable level. Uh, and I feel like that is a shame because in a lot of other sets, we did have the possibility of having like a one cost carry compete with some of the four cost carries. There also weren't any of the like go big or go home three cost carries and like even the two cost carries. Katarina, like two star Katarina was perfectly fine. You never really like needed the three star Katarina, but I feel like there should be some builds that do go for a three star two cost unit and that just never existed in a patch in the last set, especially the two cost. I know recently they've been playable through the Imperials, but they are going to be removing that, of course. But again, like I can't think of a single time where there was a carry of every single cost level that you would kind of like aim for every single game. Uh, it was mainly like you tunnel in for like a four cost carry in most patches uh, this past set. And then like if you happen to get like the perfect reroll game, no ifs or and or buts about it, then you go for a reroll comp. But I feel like that, that's a little weird because I do like having the option open of having like different costs of carries because that means the game is much less contested. That means more things are um, essentially more within the same power level of each other. And we just never really hit that in the past patch. I know there are some augments for like three cost three stars that really help for those specific builds. But if the patch just isn't friendly with that, for example, in like the Kaisa patch, like no one was going for three cost three stars, for example. And I feel like that should be something that would be nice to have in the game. Do I have a solution to this? I do, but it's not gonna be very clean. Essentially, you just do tons of little micro adjustments until everything just hits the perfect spots, but that's gonna be impossible to do because they only have a major patch and then a B patch, and B patches they typically only use for emergencies. Um, so I don't think they're gonna be able to get to that level in every patch, but I'm hoping they could hit it maybe like 50% or like 75% of the patches in this next set. Next up, I want all items to have some use in the game. They've already started working on this. We saw Locket of the Iron Solari being buffed from 8 seconds to 15 seconds. There were a lot of items that just feel completely outclassed. For example, uh, Zeke's Herald, not really that great. Um, I feel like this is really different from previous sets. I don't remember that many items being like completely useless. If you get like an RFC this set, you pretty much cry about it. If you get like a locket, you're not building it. There are so many items that I just feel are completely unbuildable. Normally there's only like one item that is unbuildable, but recently there've been a lot. There's been a lot of reliance on best in slot items on your carries. The flexibility of items such as like slamming hand justice is early, playing for like a top four play style just don't really exist anymore. Of course, like slamming items still helps getting a top four, but not slamming those specific flex items, which I believed helped a lot for those types of play styles in like set one, set two, and set three. And I just feel like those don't really exist anymore. Even like the top four placements in a lot of games that I've seen both in my games and like other people's games at, at all levels, by the way, uh, they have pretty much best in slot items in every single one of them. And like the whole flex play style just completely disappeared uh, because I think personally it's due to the itemizations. At first, when I saw this in set five, I thought it was only due to the armory mechanic uh, because armories allow you to pretty much get perfect items every single game. However, there's no armory in set six, so I do wonder why this came back. I feel like the Hand of Justice nerfs kind of fed a little bit into that. Uh, Locket isn't as quite strong. Static Shiv right now is either too strong or too weak because now instead of playing for top four with a Static Shiv win streak, people go fast nine instead and go first or eighth still. Uh, so it is a little weird. I'm not really too sure how to solve this. I just know in like some games, you get like a GA Morello. You already know what you're doing for the rest of the game because you have best in slots for Kaisa. Um, so hopefully they change that in the future. Because let me tell you guys a story. In set one, I know this was a long time ago, but there was a game I had where I was scouting around in the very beginning of the game. And back then you could get four items right after the neutral rounds in the very beginning of the game. Right now, you could the most items you could get are three, but back then, there were times where you could get four of them. This guy started the game with a BF sword, a chain vest, 
a rod, and a belt. So automatically, you're already thinking you have GA Morello. It was just as strong back then as it is today. However, this dude instead opted to build a Zeke's Herald and a Locket, which I thought was completely nuts. And this guy, keep in mind, he was in top 100 challenger. It was the funniest thing ever because I looked him up after the game because I thought he was crazy after seeing his stuff in the game. I literally looked at his board, I was like, this guy's going first, he got perfect items, GG. But then he slams those items and I was so confused. And then it turns out this guy had like a 2 or 3% win rate when I looked him up, but his top 4 rate was completely insane, and obviously he's like a high level challenger player. And I thought that was super cool because he found a very specific top 4 playstyle that really really worked for him, and he didn't care about winning games because he loved building those items. And I hope that they figure out a way to make every item have some sort of use and also introduce the flex top 4 playstyle back into the game. The next thing I have on the wish list is kind of similar to the whole best in slot equation thing. Uh, a lot of times team comps you need like best in team comp if that makes sense. Like a lot of times people are going for very specific champions in a specific comp which is weird because the augments mix everything up a lot. Um, but I find that there isn't much of a difference between going between different traits. For example, if we look at Yone carry, his two traits were Academy and Challenger. However, no one really played 6 or 8 Challenger Yone. Everyone always went full Challenger because mathematically Challengers were always better than Academy. It just happened to be that way. However, in set 5, when we look at Draven, he was both a Forgotten and a Legionnaire. And I remember specifically, he had so many different builds that worked for him and you always adjusted what units you played with them based on your items. So in case you guys forgot, Forgotten gave you a bunch of attack damage and I believe ability power while Legionnaire gave you a lot of attack speed. Obviously, Draven likes both attack damage and attack speed, so you want to combine the two to get the most value out of the traits and the items. So what ended up happening is, if you got a lot of attack damage items, you'd go into the Legionnaire trait to get more attack speed. And if you got a lot of attack speed items, you'd lean more into the Forgotten trait to get more attack damage. However, right now with the Yone build, you pretty much only go Challenger. Like, the 4 Academy build only came out recently because they like just started looking into that, but I never see like 6 or 8 Academy Yone. I see 8 Challenger Yone all the time, but not so much the Academy. So I do hope that for, at least for some of the champions, have some balance between the different verticals if they do choose to go down those paths. Now I know all those that I just mentioned are pretty hard to implement. This one might be a little easier. Uh, I want like actual augment choices on stage 1-4. A lot of times, it feels like you don't really make a decision on 1-4. It seems like two of them are really bad, and then one of them is very good. Or one of them is so good that you don't even read the other two. Or your units on your board don't allow you to go for some of the augments and only lean towards one of them, in which case you're really not making a choice anyways. I feel like a lot of games this set, I myself was like talking to myself, I'm like, okay, I guess the game just decided which augment to go for me this time around. I understand this happening around like stage 3-2, because if you're going Arcanist, for example, and an Arcanist augment comes up, obviously you're going to go for that. But at stage 1-4, like, I want to have some options open. I don't want to be forced into a specific augment just because I don't want to lock myself into like a Chemtech build or like a Bruiser build. Essentially, I want more flex augments in the game and have them actually work in different compositions so that they aren't so one-dimensional. Um, this one, I feel like they just need to fix around the RNG a little bit, maybe add a couple of different augments to kind of fix that, but hopefully that does come out. Um, now for my next one, these are really easy to implement. Um, it sounds so stupid, but I want a matchup tracker built into the game because, man, <laughs> I don't want to download a third-party app and have advertisements playing on my screen 24-7 whenever I exit the game. Some of these even play advertisements in the load screen. Like, you gotta be kidding me, right? Um, obviously, they do have their place if someone really enjoys what an overlay is giving them. Like, sure, give them that. But, man, having to use it just to matchup track... Whenever I turn my matchup tracker on, I go up like 300 LP, which is kind of ridiculous, right? As soon as I turned off my matchup tracker this set, I dropped 500 LP in a week. Um, that just shows how powerful it is. Like, I know scouting is very important, but I don't think the game should only be about using a freaking matchup tracker because they should either add it into the game or they should change the matchmaking system to be something else and, like, just change it up every now and then. I feel like only having three opponents 
uh, makes it a little weird. Maybe we could have like maybe four or five potential opponents per turn. So we're not specifically targeting certain people and reserve that type of sweaty positioning towards the end of the game when you're in like a 1v1 or 1v2 scenario. The next one is also pretty easy. I want like a super late game augment. Maybe if you reach like stage seven, you get like an extra augment of any level. Like I'm not sure if I want a silver one. I'm not sure if I want a prismatic one. Um, but I feel like that would add something like really fun to the game because in the late game, some games feel like you just need a little bit more extra, a little bit here to really boost your team up to be super capped. And it'd be kind of cool. And like only have it in like stage seven or something like that. So it's like way in the late game. It won't affect like the outcome of a lot of your games, only like for the 1v1 scenarios for top one versus top two. But I feel like it'd be something like pretty neat to add um, just because it, would be more fun, I guess. I hope that they're not lazy by adding a mechanic like, oh, once you reach below 40 life, you get an extra augment or something like that. Cause that feels like it would be like rinse and repeating something from a previous set when they do like a 0.5 update. Um, next up, I want them to fix putting items on champions. It feels so hard to put on an item on a champion, like right as a game starts or like the fight starts. Like I have so many clips that I wish I could find right now, but I don't know how to do it. Like the character models don't line up with like the hitbox. At least it feels that way a lot of times. Uh, the trick to avoiding this is only drop the item when like a pop-up appears. But a lot of times I have my mouse and the item clearly over the champion, uh, but a pop-up does not appear and therefore your item won't drop on that champion. Uh, it might be hard to do because like a lot of the character models are a lot different, but it feels like something that should have been added to the game like five sets ago, you know? Uh, now onto the smaller changes. These are still going to be pretty important in my opinion, uh, but these are more like conceptual or like broader term or like super, super tiny. So first things first, they're probably never gonna do this, but I wanna bring on hit builds back. They removed every on hit item in the game and they are removing it from a lot of champions from what I've noticed. And like Runons doesn't do it anymore. It, like it literally just doesn't exist anymore. I'm not sure what the issue was because on hit exists in League of Legends. If they're able to balance it in League of Legends, I'm sure they could balance it in TFT as well. Um, I feel like removing it is just kind of lazy. And I, I mean, it's a fun mechanic to put in the game. You know, like we all remember those like gunslinger builds with the shrink ray in set one. Those were really fun to play. A little annoying to play against, but like super fun to do those types of builds. Uh, but yeah, I hope maybe like in set seven, they bring them back because it's for sure not coming in 6.5 because it's for sure not coming in 6.5. Next up, I want some more chase traits. Like chase traits means going like deep down into a vertical trait uh, to get like a big bonus for whatever trait that is. So the fact that like seven mutant doesn't exist when I've been able to play seven mutants a lot of times in set six uh, is a bit of a shame because like you're capped at five mutants. It's not like a trait that should be capped because they all just give stats or like a certain bonus. So I don't see any reason not to add like a seven mutant trait, especially when an augment exists that gives you two more mutants. Uh, like why isn't there a seven mutant trait? I'm not really too sure. I'm sure there are other traits that follow the similar vein where there just doesn't seem to be a reason why there isn't an extra level to them. Next up, I want AOE CC to be tuned down. Uh, we've all had those games. We're playing Jin. And we have IE, Last Whisper, Giant Slayer, the supposed best in slot items for Jin. We put him in the bottom right or bottom left, but offset one space to avoid the Blitzcranks. And then all of a sudden we face a guy, he's got Blitzcrank, he's got Braum, Scion, and Galio. And then all of a sudden, our Jin is shooting his shots, right? He gets to full mana, he's starting his ultimate, then boom, Scion ults him. Boom, Braum ults him, and then boom, Galio jumps on top of him, and then finally, once he's out of all the crowd control, Galio is doing his last auto attack on the Jin to kill him. Uh, I feel like there needs to be less AoE CC in the game. Like Yumi, Galio, Scion, Braum, like there's, there's just a lot, because all those are very solid units. They're played in almost every single comp, and yeah, it's just AoE CC. It's just hitting too much in my opinion. AoE CC that I'm a fan of is something like Zyra because it's AoE but in like a kind of a different way. Obviously she's a two cost unit so uh, you do still want like maybe Galio CC to be the same but man having it on like Braum, Yumi, the fact that you can't even kill Yumi is like such a, I don't know, I can't believe Yumi has existed for this long during the set. I know they're removing Academy so Yumi's probably going to be gone but dang I wish they just nerfed her earlier. 
Um, and hopefully the new champs they introduced don't have like as much CC as there was in this past set. So the next three, I'm just gonna spit out really quickly. I wanna jump the assassin for Frozen Heart. We've had this every single set. There's like a pike that dashes around. Um, I know Katarina kind of jumped around, but she's not really someone who should be holding Frozen Heart. Um, it, it should be a support unit, you know? Like, Pike is definitely a support unit. And yeah, you don't want to put Frozen Heart on like your primary carry, because that's what Cat typically is in like an assassin build. Next up, I want them to bring back the extra range augment, because I feel like that opens up a lot of possibilities. There isn't quite a Master Yi in this set, but Master Yi's in previous sets, you always do these on-hit builds, he wants an RFC. And I want to see a game where, like, you could go some build like a uh, range Master Yi without the need of having an RFC and putting full damage items on him. I feel like that'd be super cool to have. Uh, maybe not in this set, but maybe in set 7 we could see something like that. Next, this one is super, super small. I want to make the hyper roll augment more about hyper rolling. Right now, people are using it as, like, a fast leveling augment, and that just goes against the nature of the name. I don't know if you want to rename it or something like that, but... I feel like hyper roll should be about hyper roll. Unfortunately, I do not have a good solution on how to change the augment because, dang, it's really hard to entice people to hyper roll. But maybe buffing one cost, two cost, three cost carries could be a way to do it in this set because, again, that was in my previous part of the wish list, as you guys heard before. Uh, last but not least, this one is actually like a pretty big one, depending on who you ask. But I want augments to be added to the Riot API so we could see more information about the augments in terms of data. I feel like that would just be a pretty cool thing to have at like some like stat checking website. Like maybe an augment that we didn't think was OP is actually really broken and we'll just never be able to find that out. Or like one augment super good in the late game, super bad in the early game. I want to know which ones those are very specifically, um, but unfortunately they just don't have that information in the API so we just don't get those stats. But that is going to be it for my wish list for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you guys have any other wishes, do put them down in the comments below. And hopefully someone sees this and, yeah, adds it to the game, I guess. Um, but yeah, I feel like these, some of them are pretty hard to do. I will give it that, but I, I do feel like it would be nice for the game. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I will see you all later.